vibe we are in the middle of March fast running towards the end of March and what a month this has been it has been absolutely crazy in my world I don't know what your world is like but anyway let's start with first things first lock cabin patchwork cull is going very well we've released week three this last Wednesday and we're gonna release week four this coming Wednesday and I'm actually so enjoying seeing the little photos come up on Facebook of everybody that made it. Um, I'm actually quite overwhelmed with the number of patterns that we've sold. And I was very surprised. Um, I think the only one that has sold more so far than um, Lock Cabin Patchwork Cal was My Lover of My Soul. My Lover of My Soul I think sold 140 times or something like that. Um, Lock Cabin Patchwork Cal I think is now at about 100 and I don't know 100 and something let me quickly check maybe I can find it quick um, so yeah the cowl is going very nice and I'm really enjoying seeing um, the people's projects it's just so it, you know when you're mm. a designer you write the pattern you go through all the trouble of getting it tested you have the pattern tech edited and then you wonder will people like it will they buy it will they use it so when you see that this pattern is being bought so many times um ravelry i can't spell it it really it just makes my day it just absolutely makes my day whenever that happens let's see quickly where are we on the sales with log cabin patchwork now i don't care whether you are using a kit obviously if you buy a kit i'm very happy about it because i can get a little bit of commission but working with your stash on just as great i don't mind lock cabin patchwork we're sitting at 113 so i am very 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 glad about this and as i said the lover of my soul yeah he's still the top one he's at 124 there we go so yeah we're getting there if you haven't joined the cull and you still want to, just go buy the pattern on Ravelry and jump right in. Um, week 4 will come out on Wednesday and there's a full 8 weeks um, of the cull. So we've got another 4 weeks left still after this one. Okay, I am currently working on Cable Me Cozy. These are loose panels. They haven't been joined yet. You can see they, they open. I've just draped them here over the back of the couch to sort of show you what we're working on. So this is a cable blanket and it's knitted in separate strips because one, it's um, easier on the hands. It's not that heavy weight if you have that many stitches because the panels are quite long. I'm making mine for a king size extra length bed. And um, also you only have to concentrate on one cable at a time instead of a lot. So it's just easier to, it's more enjoyable for me to work on one thing at a time. So that's how I'm doing it. So we started off with a broad panel in the middle. This one is the center one, this one. And this one actually has three cables next to each other. I just wanted to balance the center of the blanket very nicely. And then there's panels on either side. Now that one is nearly done, the last one on the end. I will finish this one today still, and then I will start again. So what you see happening is that the panels don't repeat. We're not going to repeat any cable at all. If a panel is done, you're done with that pattern. It's Every panel is different, but yet it still balances. So if you look at this one and this one, they're not the same but they're similar they're the same size or width and they have more or less the same thing going on but there's differences and that's how we balance the blanket so the blanket at the end will have different panels but it will be very nicely balanced and there's um, quite a few sizes that we've got um, I haven't got my iPad is over there now my tablet um, I think there's a I think there's 1.1 1 .1. um, uh, let me just make sure now there's 1.5 by 1.5 meter 
1.8 by 1.8 which is very nice for a single bed three quarter bed 2 by 2 meter for a double bed and then 2.2 by 2.2 for a queen uh, a king size extra length bed so i'm making the biggest one 2.2 by 2.2 and um, i'm thoroughly enjoying it i'm gonna finish that one today and um, i'm probably gonna start sewing the panels together on tuesday we have a public holiday on tuesday in south africa some unrest and protest going on at the same time but i'm not gonna let that deter me so i'm gonna spend some time on tuesday and join in join these panels so that i can start getting a feel for the width of the blanket how many panels we must make so yeah um so at in 20 i, th I think it was 2021 it was either late 2020 or 2021 i bought this book the Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible and I waited quite a few weeks for it to be delivered and um, I haven't used the book as yet uh, one reason being me lazy because the book is all charted it's not written patterns and I prefer written patterns but I will just translate it into written patterns so that I can use it but I just flip the book open look at this got the most exquisite patterns in that you can think of it is just mind-blowing there's lace in here there's cables in here there's the most beautiful cables and lace that's combined and um, yeah so I'm gonna get into this book and pull some cables out of here and um, rework them into panels for cable me cozy i'm really enjoying this one i don't know when i'm gonna be done when i'm finished i'm finished then then we'll start the knit along but until then i'm just enjoying the right now i am working here with two strands of moya caress now moya caress is a textured cotton i always refer to it as a winter cotton and now that I've got one close by, I can actually show you. It's got beautiful texture because it's a slab yarn that is plied with a straight yarn. And the result is this lovely, lovely texture that you get. And I'm using it in a double strand. So the knitting is actually very nice and thick and squishy. Um, these are just baby cables, much to the frustration of my one tester and my bestie Alta. She hates a baby cable and I love it. <laughs> anyway, so we're knitting on a number six millimeter needle. So it's nice and thick and it goes quite fast. And you have a very nice, um, thick, squishy blanket. But what's nice about this, when it's dirty, you chuck it into the washing machine, throw it into the dryer, back onto the bed, fat and fluffy like new. How do I know that? Because I've made one already. The previous air and caress blanket that I made was also with this cotton. And, um, but it's too small for my bed. It fits onto a normal double bed. So I decided I'm going to bite the bullet and make a big one for my own bed. Now, I know people say, but the kits are going to be too expensive. I know that. That's why we are offering smaller sizes like 1.5 by 1.5. It's going to be more affordable than 2.2 by 2.2. But the way I see it, I will rather make one blanket in a year that's big enough to fit on my bed that can become an heirloom for my children than make five small baby blankets because what the hell am I supposed to do with them? I don't want to gift everything that I make. And baby blankets, what am I supposed to do with in my house? I've, I'm going to end up giving it away to somebody that's got a baby. So I want to make something for my bed, for myself, that I can use and enjoy for years to come. And if I can only make one of those in a year, then so be it. So that's how I see it. Okay, and then, obviously in between, um, I always have more than one project on the go. It depends on the company that I'm going to have and where we're going to go and whatever. So um, winter is soon gonna start approaching we're supposed to be in autumn already but it is so freaking hot in south africa yikes so i'm not knitting on anything else yet on any winter stuff i'm waiting for it to cool down a little bit but donna donna from color spun i told her the other day you're a freaking enabler 
and she just laughed at me. Donna came out with ombre wheels and color wheels. Oh, man. And I immediately ordered two. Now look at this. The one starts off gray and then it goes darker, darker, darker until it gets black. And the other one is a mustardy yellow. Now I'm going to combine these two. I want to knit a top down jersey. And I want to start with the darkest shade of mustard and the lightest shade of charcoal together. And then as the mustard goes lighter, the charcoal goes darker until it ends. And then I'm just going to carry on in plain black. So this is um, Double Knit Merino Superwash. It's an ombre wheel. And I'm going to make a measure and make jersey for the winter with this. But I want one of these with this fat roll over collar. That's what I want to do. And the rest of it is going to be plain plain because it's about the color. It's not about the texture that much. The, the collar must be a focal point and the stripes that I'm going to create in the differing colors. That's going to be the focal point. So the rest of the jumper is going to be very plain and whatever. So we are going to go camping easter weekend we haven't been camping in many years the last time we went camping was in august 2009 yes and then we moved out of town to the farm so when you're out on the farm you don't have this urge to get out of town into the open spaces because you are open every day and um, we've been back in town now for um, a year and a half yeah a year and a half and we're starting to feel that now we want to get out so we started to pull our camp stuff that we still had out of storage and we started to fill in the bits that we're missing and we actually went last weekend and we bought ourselves a bush trailer that we're still waiting for we will probably only pick it up sometime later this week and then Easter weekend we're going to go camping we're gonna go for five or six days my husband is gonna be fishing and i'm gonna be knitting and i think that this little beauties might just go with me to the camping site i think and if it works the way i think it will i might want to buy more but go check it out on Colorspun, Colorspun. I can't remember if it's .com or .co.za, either one of the two. But um, oh, these, these color wheels and the ombre wheels are just so beautiful. I absolutely love it. So I can't wait to work with these. And then one of the biggest manufacturers in South Africa, Soprotex, they are the manufacturer of L and Charity and Mirage and family knit and they've got a, a big big range of cotton threads and acrylic yarns when i was a young girl the first pair of socks i knitted was with l sock yarn and it was um, proper sock yarn pure merino wool with nylon in and then it got discontinued from the market and for a long time we were sort of deprived of sock yarn in south africa until the indie dyers started to come in to play and then we got nice sock yarns from the indie dyes um, nurturing fibers has a sock yarn that i really really like with a very high twist um, but Soprotex has brought out a new merino yarn again and i was so pleased to see that they've got a natural product in their product lineup again i haven't yet bought it very affordable though um, I want to buy some and try it and see. I hope it's a better quality than the cotton that they brought out just now. Remember last month I showed you the cotton, but it's pilling worse than acrylic yarn. I was so shocked about it and disappointed about it as well, actually. So I'm really hoping this merino that they brought out now is going to be of a higher quality. I would really like to work with it. And um, while I was looking at it this, this week, you know, COVID really changed our world, especially in a place like South Africa. I know overseas you've had online shopping for many years. And in South Africa we did too. We had um, 
a lot of online shops. I mean, my online shop was running in 2014 when I started Yarn and a Barn. So online shops has been going for a long time already. But suddenly with COVID, this whole shopping from home thing in South Africa just blew up exponentially. Suddenly the big supermarkets were in competition. Who can get the groceries to you the fastest? And um, we actually make a joke in, in South Africa. We have um, a supermarket chain, Checkers. And uh, Checkers started really pushing this in just after COVID came. 60-60. Um, they have your groceries at your house in 60 minutes. And we giggled the other day. We saw a meme that says 6060, the biggest motorbike gang in South Africa. <laughs> but um, it has also changed the way we shop for yarn. When I opened my yarn shop, there were few indie dyes in South Africa that sold directly to the public. Most of them sold to yarn shops and the yarn shops had online websites where you could buy and it would be shipped to you. And then gradually it started changing. The indie dyers started selling directly to the public. They made their own online shops and the yarn shops starting to started to feel the burden. Suddenly they didn't have that much um, turnaround anymore. People were not buying from the yarn shop per se, they would buy directly from the indie dyer. And the yarn shops were bitterly upset about it. And now suddenly the knitting mills, the, uh, the, the yarn mills, the mills that manufacture the yarn are selling directly to the public. And they are bypassing the indie dyers. And the indie dyers are getting very upset about this. It's to me, it's just amazing how our world is constantly changing. It's it's always changing. It's been like that since the beginning of time, and it will never end. It will always be changing the way we go forward. But for us, as the crafters and the consumers and the users, we are spoiled for choice at the moment. You can buy yarn directly from Stucken. And you can dye it yourself if you want to. I played with yarn dyeing a few times in my life and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I might just do it again, I don't know. You can even buy the yarn from Stucken Yarns that's undyed and knit a whole garment. And you can ask somebody like Donna from Colorspun, would you dye this for me? And she will. Donna has dyed the previous um, Erin Carey's blanket I made. I made in a natural color. I don't know. I think I was possessed. <laughs> when I decided to do it. The keeping that clean in my house was just impossible at that stage. We had a dog that would sleep on the bed and uh oh, no. So I sent the blanket off to Donna, the whole four kilograms of it, and she dyed it for me. So this time at least I'm more clever, I didn't go for natural. So we are just so spoiled for choice at the moment with the the number of options we have in the market. There's cheap, there's expensive, there's natural fiber, there's um, acrylic yarn. There are so many online shops that we can buy from and we can really shop around to find something that matches our budget and, and that makes us happy. So yeah, I am very happy. Um, I've got lots to do still on Cable Me Cozy. This is going to take a couple of weeks, months maybe because this is a massive blanket and it's a lot of knitting. And yeah, so um, today I want to finish the one little panel. And um, then I want to sit in my Japanese book and find another one that I like. But it's it's quite difficult now. Because we're making different size blankets, I have to make sure that the pattern repeats fit into every size. So that's a problem. And then because I'm trying to balance the blanket on both sides of the center, I have to find two cables that are different but that are friends to put on either side. So I can't just pick one because it's nice. I have to think, oh, this one is nice. Can I find a friend for it before I can actually use it? So this is taking um, a lot of time in the typing department. And um, luckily my testers are absolutely brilliant. At least I'm ahead of them at the moment. <laughs> there was a few days where the testers were ahead of me where I was like, lagging behind on one of the panels but yeah I've caught up and um, 
maybe I take this to the camping site, maybe not, I don't know, maybe I take both and see which one I feel like. It's all about being happy, you know, there's no rules. I saw um, um, one of my friends the other day, she shared a post about a woman that was um, depressed and she saw a therapist and the therapist asked her, what is the most overwhelming thing for you right now? And she said, the dishes. The dishes look terrible and I can't put them into the dishwasher yet. They're too dirty and I don't feel like rinsing it. And the therapist said to her, run the dishwasher twice. Run it three times if you have to. Make it work for you. There are no rules. And you know what? It's true. There are no rules. You need to make yourself happy. You need to look after your mental health. And if you want to knit this fat cable blanket of mine in sock yarn for a baby, if it makes you happy, then do it. Who cares? If you want to spend thousands and knit it in merino, go for it. There are no rules. We need to make ourselves happy through our crafts because our craft is what's keeping us sane in this mad world rat race that we're living in. So yeah, buy some nice yarn, make yourself happy, get those fingers moving for the next month. And when I see you again, hopefully I can show you a much bigger piece of Cable Me Cozy. Until then, if you are crocheting with us on Lock Cabin Patch with Cal, Enjoy every moment. Remember to show us your progress. We really want to see all the photos and just make sure you enjoy it and that it makes you happy. I will see you next month for another slow Saturday or Sunday. Today is a slow Sunday because yesterday was hectically busy. Today is my slow Sunday. I hope you enjoy yours as well.